Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Krzysztof Pomorski, and I am uh, going to give a lecture about ra applications of rapid single quantum flux electronics. Uh, this is the well-known technology that allows for saving big power consumption that we are facing nowadays. So essentially, I'm going to talk about the technology that allows for reduction of power consumption from 10,000 10, times to 100,000 times. And this is by usage of rapid single quantum flux electronics. So let me uh, continue on that topic and I will describe various aspects of this, of this technology. So somehow I have already given the motivation However, still, we do have a development of uh, quantum technologies those days, which mostly based on usage of superconductors. So, so also this, this uh, rapid single quantum flux electronics can be used for that purpose. So could interface classical computer with a quantum computer in creating environment. Yeah, and uh, in order to to give mm, the to present the basic concepts of rapid single quantum flux electronics, I need to bring basic facts about superconducting phenomena, and then uh, by having the picture of of physical processes taking place in superconductors, I can I can move to Josephson junction physics. And then in the context of Josephson junction physics, I can present the concept of rapid single quantum flux electronics. So, so this is a picture which gives the current technologies connected with information processing. And, uh, and you, can, you, can see, you can see the switching time, the size and the cost. And very particular, you have the rapid single flux quantum electronics, which is placed here. Still, you have a, a molecular electronics, you have quantum electronics, and you have biologically inspired materials and technologies. So uh, the so the the cryogenic environment necessary for Rapid single flux quantum electronics is not so much demanding as it is in the case of quantum technologies, and this is uh, this has to do with with operation at temperatures around four Kelvin or above, slightly above. So, which uh, which means that helium four and uh, liquid nitrogen is necessary. So, you don't need to use dilution refrigerator. And this gives you, this lowers the cost of operation as in comparison, for example, with IBM um, quantum experience uh, technology, where there is a usage of transmit qubits. And when, and in such a case, you need to cool down the sample to 10 millikelvin. And this is by, by no, uh, this is by far much more costly process. And also at 10 millikelvin, you deal with very, small cooling powers. So that's not the case of, 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 of 4 Kelvin operation, operational temperature for uh, cryogenic mm, rapid single flux quantum electronics. So um, those days, not only there are various paths of development of uh, uh, superconducting technologies, uh, one week ago, there was um, a, conf a conference in at Krakow University of Technology. The name of conference uh, was Workshop on, on Classical and Quantum Superconducting Technologies. So, <clears throat> and so this was the occasion to bring this type of electronics to this part of Europe, and also to focus our our attention, our research, and our teaching activity into that direction. So let me briefly give you the draft of 
various trends present in uh, in superconducting technologies. So basically, um, currently, one uses superconducting squids for detection of a small magnetic field. Uh, so you can you can use small organic equipment for the search of new new minerals that that are the of, of iron type for example and um, you can uh, you can use superconducting electronics for superconducting single photon detectors so you can you can uh, construct the, the two two dimensional camera that will be able to pick up the signals with quite big space resolution and in quite short time. Um, you can also build a single superconducting neutron detector using pretty much the same concept as it is the case of as it is the case of with uh, uh, single photon detectors. Furthermore, um, you can uh, you can construct many other types of sensors with superconducting materials, and they do have uh, one central advantage. Their advantage is that they usually, especially in BCS superconductors, there is low low level of noise. This low level of noise allows you to construct very sensitive detectors. And this uh, low level of noise has to do a lot with uh, physics of, of superconductors that are basically the manifestation of, um, of macroscopic quantum phenomena. Um, there are also various types of schemes for, for various types of electronics constructed with uh, superconductors. And also, in, in particular, Joseph's junctions can be used for generation and detection of terahertz radiation. So that's, that's also quite prominent direction of, of research and development. So, so all in all, I want to say that superconductors have quite a bright future. Still, they need uh, cooling certain temperatures so definitely they have as um, they have application in space technologies and also also they could they could have its usage on the ground on the earth under special conditions all right so so basically um uh, just want to stress that till now the dominant technology information processing is basing on the silicon and there is known well-known Moore law that uh, simply says about a systematic increase of size of electronics and those days those days are uh, the most most CMOS based technologies are using field effect transistors with 10 nanometers of channel length. And this is, uh, this is a very small uh, size as in comparison with uh, superconducting electronics. Semiconductor electronics is using electric field expressed by voltages, for example, to control dynamics of a circuit while some superconducting electronics is using magnetic field. So in other ways, so, the, the, so, so those two types of electronics has completely different controlling mechanism. And uh, one should take into account that fact during design of hybrid systems, for example. So um, just to, yeah. So also there is, there are certain saturation of development of semiconductor electronics those days. And it, uh, so, so it's quite characteristic to observe that the processors start to dissipate more and more power and the cooling of the of semiconductor electronics be becomes a very significant problem 
this feature of of extra cooling is absent in case of superconducting electronics that almost dissipates no energy. However, still the whole system needs to be cooled down, as you will see in the preceding slides. Um, so basically, I should also stress that in case of superconducting technologies, you have two types of materials. And the first type of material is a BCS superconductor. BCS superconductor is a classical superconductor that, that follows BCS theory of pairing phenomena in superconductors. And this is based, usually based on a simple materials as niobium, a niobium nitrate and so on. And uh, while you also have a uh, high temperature superconductors that are usually not related with metals. Usually there are ceramic materials and like IPCO, then you can have superconducting temperature even above the temperature of uh, of liquid nitrogen, this is 77 Kelvin. So high temperature superconductors has, was discovered by Bednarz and Miller in, in uh, quite recently and and uh, still the elementary cell of material is very complicated usually it's, it does include various types of elements and 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 also it it was shown already that that it's quite difficult to maintain high integration and high repetitivity in in, uh, in materials using high temperature superconductors there are in particular ceramics materials so due to the fact that fact still the dominant technology is is somehow related to bcs super uh, superconductor su superconductors um yeah so the, there will be certain fundamental quantities that will be present in in superconductors as a flux magnetic flux quantum so the magnetic the stream of magnetic fields will be quantized and uh, this has to do with fundamental prop fundamental laws of quantum mechanics and will be uh, expressed expressed uh, in in greater detail later well i would say that having the superconducting microprocessors you, you can have 0 0.1 microwatt of power usage and at, at 100 gigahertz at, it opens the possibility of three dimensional integration so due to very low power dissipation you can um, develop the electronics in three dimensions while this is not exactly the case in case of semiconductor technology um all right so you know i also need to bring attention to a josephson junction that is a kind of equivalent of transistor in case of superconducting uh, electronics still this is quite much different than field effect transistor, so you will see that on coming slides. So what is the superconductor? Well, I would say superconductor is a material that uh, shows no dissipation at uh, below certain temperature. So it was this uh, superconductivity was discovered uh, by uh, uh, in, 19, in 1911 by Ones, and this was done during the time when he was searching for uh, actually the confirmation of Lord Kelvin paradigm. So the Lord Kelvin paradigm was that the lower the temperature is, the more frozen will be electric charge. And, and thus the conductivity 
it should drop at low temperatures. Actually, it turns out completely different. It then turned out that uh, this um, and that that he was studying the mercury, and he discovered that below there is this temperature, and um, uh, below certain temperature, the electric resistance drops by five magnitudes. So essentially, it, it's seen as zero. So you have a phenomena that is not commonly studied. You have flow of electric current almost with no with no presence of electric field and also no presence of resistance. So somehow the ohmic law st stops to be valid. Actually it does occur still, but in in on much greater scale, much lesser scale. And also instead of um, Ohm law, you you deal with London relation. That will be uh, that that is only valid for the case of uh, superconductors and and phenomena with microscopic quantum effect as superconductivity. Well, the second feature of superconductors that was discovered more than twenty years after after this discovery of drop of resistance was uh, discover of Meissner effect. So you have, have a superconducting ball. If you place this ball in external magnetic field, the first reaction will be that this external magnetic field will try to omit the interior of the ball. And this is actually mm, not fully, this is absent in most materials, this effect, but this is due to the fact that that um, superconductor manifests its um, has a, a macroscopic wave function, and this wave function is defining its ground state. So, whatever the magnetic field tries to penetrate the superconductor, usually it's it's on the on, 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 the, on the surface of superconductor. We are talking here essentially about static magnetic field. Still, this phenomena will be applied to um, dynamic magnetic field, time-dependent magnetic field, or direction or magnitude can change. Um, there is certain similarity of, of static Meissner effect with with the fact that we take any metal and place it in rapidly changing magnetic field environments, so then also we will have a kind of skin effect. Okay, those phenomena, there is some analogy between those two phenomena, but of course, fundamentally they are quite different. And basically what happens with superconductor placed in external magnetic field is that, is that uh, the, the by London relation, the elect non the non dissipative electric current is generated in the interior of superconductor, and this this current counteracts the presence of magnetic fields inside. Actually, from more microscopic perspective, we, you attribute the superconductivity to to the Cooper pairs, and in the Cooper pairs, the electrons always spin up and spin down. Uh, two electrons of opposite spins form a Cooper pair, and so this is a quasi boson that obeys different statistics, not Fermi direct by boson by but boson statistics. So, um, and the uh, due to this nature, superconductors can stand very, very, very big electric current flowing via this superconductor. Under the condition that there is no directly voltage applied to superconduct. So I would like to stand out that essentially superconductors doesn't like electric field. And there is certain amount of electric field that when it there is when it's applied to superconductor, what happens is that superconductor is losing its superconducting state. 
and this tr transition has a transition to a normal state. All right, so you, you can spot it. So of course, uh, this is also quite noticeable that various Nobel Prize has been awarded for study on superconducting phenomena. And the first in that direction was given to, to Ones, uh, even though he was searching for opposite phenomena, uh, the Lord Kelvin paradigm that expressed classical physics, he uh, he has found completely uh, the, the result completely contradicting his imagination. And this was also a signature of, 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 of presence of, of quantum mechanical phenomena. So later, the theory of superconductivity and superfluidity was de was developed in greater detail when the quantum mechanics was developed. So, so there are certain. So it took time for humankind to understand those things better, and somehow the first crown uh, connected with full understanding of superconductors was Barton Cooper Schreifer theory that uh, explained the pairing between electrons forming quasi bosons and then then one can study this bcs paper to see how this mechanism works in greater detail all right um yeah it's already mentioned that the feature of superconductivity is no presence of dissipation so there are certain um, there are certain analogy between superconductivity and superfluidity, even though those phenomena are quite different. So when you you can you can drive even a helium four if you pull down below to Kelvin, it starts to be in a superfluid phase, and then you can observe that that uh, this uh, there is almost no no viscosity so even the so the the, the liquid can can um, gonna go up on the walls of the container can creep and uh, and also in, in such case the whole system behaves as as a one quantum particle in a way so in case in, in case of superfluids you deal with Grospitaevsky equations, why in the case of superconductors you deal with this book under formalism or or book of Dijon equations. Uh, also in both phenomena you can introduce topological defects in order parameter and this will be they will have certain technological applications. So you also can introduce vortices in case of superconductors. Um, so let me draw your attention a little bit on the the most kind of most simple mathematical description of this phenomena. So basically, the first equation that is shown here express uh, express the it's 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 a gisbert Landau equation. So it's in in a way you can perceive this equation as nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So you have kinetic term which is given here. So this is like and the, the kinetic. Uh, so this is together. This is p square over two m. So there is uh, the presence of vector potential in this term. So there's kinetic term as the same as in the Schrodinger equation plus linear and uh, linear potential terms so 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 that's that so this is a theory where c to the power three occurs and c is the macroscopic wave function yeah i i forget to mention that actually uh the smallest variations in features of superconductors uh, can be done on the scale of superconducting coherence length that is pretty much for many materials in the range of 3000 angstrom which is 300 nanometers so this means this means that superconductors are i would say not so small you, you cannot 
create two small devices because you, if you go the size of superconductor smaller than its superconducting coherence length, then the superconducting feature will disappear. So what you need to have is what you need to have is you need to 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 tune material properties in and to have a resolution of three hundred nanometers. That's not so highly demanding those days as as in regard to modern lithography processes. So three hundred nanometers is quite big size as in comparison, for example, three nanometers of a channel length in most recent uh, field effect transistors. Um, yeah, so, um, and also you you have the flow of, you have the flow of electric current that follows you the pretty much the relation present in Schrodinger formalism. It's given here, this is density of electric current. And here you have this, it's the, 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 the the Maxwell equations, you have this um, connection with um, and the magnetic field. So you have actually rotation of, of rotation of, of vector potential. So this term does describe such such as such things. Um, uh, solving those equations actually were were done by one one of my students that already graduated, uh, Bartosz Stoyewski. Defending his master thesis, actually developing GL relaxation method algorithm. All right, let me move on. So, so now let me say a little bit about the features. Features, let's say, uh, about so called uh, or defect of order parameter, superconducting order parameter. That's that's quite crucial. That uh, so, so what happens is that let us con let us consider the case of system with symmetry, with the rotational symmetry. So you have you have you have such such disk as given here. If the system is symmetric, let's let us consider this is two dimensional system. Then, then the area inside this disk is given by a wave complex value scalar wave function that, that, that describes the properties of material. And this is complex value, so it has modulus and phase. And after a complete circulation, you are coming to the same point. So the, the function needs to have a the same value after one or n times circulation. So this 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 gives a your, your precondition of of quantizing of the flux of magnetic field. So this the this fact. So you can you can study this fact in, in, in greater extent. And um, yeah so so I'll always What is really essential is that um, the vector potential becomes very real physical field. So what is the vector potential from most general perspective? So actually we have a Maxwell equations and we have famous uh, relations saying the divergence of magnetic field is set to zero. So this means there is no magnetic field on a pole. And so you can see, and this is will be this this relation will be automatically valid if you presume that P is some rotation of some some vector potential A. This that is vector field and uh, so this this vector potential concept was mathematical concept that was very helpful in solving maxwell equations for maxwell equations in various physical in various circumstances however 
it, it turned out that uh, that in uh, that vector pot potential has certain contribution to momentum of electron moving via material in presence of magnetic field and due to this fact you have the so-called aharonov bomb effect where variety of vector potential field was revealed and and later also this london relation was discovered so this simply says that in in the biggest approximation that current density current density is um, proportional to uh, vector potential so vector potential can play a role of can play a role of uh, electric field still you can obtain some some kind of let's say relation as kind of London relation if you if you have a Druid model and if you start to do with relaxation time going to infinity so so in such case you will get a natural transition from from ohmic law to um, London relation so the fact that relaxation time is going to plus infinity means of existence of some order so actually the electrons or copper pairs actually present in superconductor they move in their ordered fashion so so the so somehow in coordinate fashion so they don't often collide with uh, let's say cores of atoms and due to that fact they don't dissipate the energy so there's no heat release during the current flow via superconductor of course such picture is kind of oversimplified but still does exist and uh, because in real superconductors you have two fluids superfluid of Hooker pairs and normal fluid of electrons that are not paired so those electrons that are not paired they still generate some dissipation but usually they are in minority the, the the effect of a normal phase presence is only important if we start to go with certain temperature to critical temperature when superconductor starts to lose its properties so basically there are certain factors that keep the superconductor in its superconducting state and uh, one of the fact is that um, magnetic field of certain strength um, can destroy super some superconductivity having this kind of oversimplified picture of Cooper pairs with two electrons with opposite spin the we can say that electric field the magnetic field tries to align two spins in the same direction and thus breaks the Cooper pair existence on another hand you can uh, you can destroy superconductivity by too high uh, current density that will drive a system out of superconducting phase and also yeah so so there's certain thermodynamical or magnetic field uh, contributions that can bring the system out of its out of superconducting state um, in single photon detectors you keep superconductor close to the critical temperature and when the photon hits material it locally um, warms up material material and then you, you can see the, the case of so superconductor that stopped to be a superconductor and then this you can see on the current voltage characteristic we'll, we'll go into the situation in greater detail um here there will be flux quantum property that will be exploited in greater detail this h over 2e and this is 2.07 times 10 to minus 15 weber so so this makes magnetic uh this, this makes squids or superconducting technology quite sensitive to small variations of magnetic field all right so let me move on 
yeah, so this is another case of uh, because of what happens is what does happen when you place material material in sternomagnetic field. So you can have a disk with uh, all inside. So then this magnetic field will automatically bring generate the current flow. And also this and this current flow can can be almost forever because this is non-dissipative current. So actually this even though that here we we show single flux or multiple flux with any that is integer number, actually this this can turn out that um that similar concept but much bigger scale you can use as a device that stores you electric energy the source of energy energy in in form of magnetic field and however still the storing device needs to be cooled down to the temperatures below uh, to crit uh, critical superconductor temperature so usually usually below liquid nitrogen temperature but it does depend it, sometimes so you can also use itc superconductors to 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 so, so, so in such case, the only cooling by liquid nitrogen is necessary. So basically, what happens is, so this is one scenario of of magnetic field, and you know the inducing the screen current in superconductor. That's this case. Well, you can also attempt with make attempt another attempt. You can have two dimensional. Mm, material and uh, in two-dimensional material you can place this material in external magnetic field as in a solenoid and in such case um the magnetic field will punch via via superconductor and in that, that case the vortex of the defect of topological other parameter is generated so then I'm just giving you the brief concept how things are because things are things are let's say much more complicated. You, you can describe the situation using five formalisms. So basically, what happens is magnetic field can locally punch via the superconductor, and this the intensity of magnetic field is, is given here. And also, due to this fact, the density of Cooper pairs is lowered. So in a sense, normal state is induced locally. So the, actually, this phenomena was discovered by Abrikozov, and there was a Nobel Prize given to Abrikozov. He was he has already passed away, but but he, I managed to to listen to his talk some some time ago. Yeah. So in one of this international conference on superconductivity and ferromagnetism in Turkey, that's a very big uh, conference. Yeah. So, so this is so-called vortex solution. is is present is a valid solution if he in the case of his book under formalism. And then, so you you can have a superconductor placed in magnetic field, then you have a, a appearance of vortices. Uh, and then, so these defects of superconducting order parameter, and when you apply external column the current. What happens is that the core of vortex is in a quasi-normal state, and then when it moves, dissipation uh, appears, and there's a certain also Lorentz force acting on vortices. Yeah, so you can investigate this uh, because every vortex is supported by by non-dissipative current, so it's like you can see like closed loop with current and when you place it in magnetic field, it will there will be a Lorentz force. All right, you can you can you can analyze this phenomena in greater detail in some time. All right, so next important concept which I want to describe is is actually this uh, tunneling Josephson junction, and this is very important system. Because this is somehow the system very often used, well, the most prominent system from the point of view of superconducting electronics.
It's like transistor. It has importance of transistor in, in, in semiconductor technology. So what is a, a, a Josephson junction? So you have uh, two superconductors that you separate by a barrier. Barrier is, is material that is non superconducting. And what happens is that Cooper pairs from a left to right superconductor can tunnel it's due to tunneling effect. And, uh, and there is what is driving this effect is a phase difference in superconducting other parameter on the left and the right, phi1 and phi2. And if this phase presence occurs, there is a flow of electric current. So um, this was discovered by Graham Josephson, and he was the youngest Nobel Prize winner ever. And it gave uh, foundation for development of, of superconducting electronics, both classical and quantum. And today I I focus my attention on class on the classical superconducting electronics in a way classical. Well, you can always argue. And to what extent you can even call material superconductors to be classical materials representing classical technology because still they rely on microscopic quantum effect. Yeah, so uh, so this is so-called tunneling Josephson junction. It's very important that you activate current flow, non-dissipative current flow by placement of the this, this structure in external magnetic field. So magnetic field, not electric field, is 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 a is, is a driven um, is 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 a driven mechanism. Also, I would stand that all superconducting has superconducting gap. And if you if you apply voltage bigger than three milli electron volts, usually you break down all most of low temperature BCS superconductors. So basically, you have to be very careful designing your chip so you don't so so you preserve superconducting materials from touching the electrodes where significant voltage can be present so yeah and the, i would like to stress out that certain dissipation is present in superconductors still this this effect is quite minor Never, nevertheless, you can study this effect by by using so-called and the non-equilibrium green function techniques. And there is a copying book on non-equilibrium superconductivity, on the non-equilibrium non phenomena in superconductivity. I can give you some reference afterwards. So this is Josephson junction. This is so-called tunneling Josephson junction. Actually, it was very much surprising at this stage that this phenomena, I would say, it was not predicted by Barton. Uh, Barton had had more than one Nobel Prize for a tra semiconductor transistor and for BCS theory, but he was against this idea that electrons can tunnel. Actually, this Nobel Prize that was given was given to uh, for tunneling phenomena in solid in solid materials, and this tunneling via this barrier was one, one of one of them. So the Josephson results was was confirmed experimentally experimentally by Schaeffer, and that tried to say that Josephson argument is wrong, and actually he has proved that that his argument is fine. So, so, so this phenomena was uh, discovered at Cambridge University. It's even though that superconductivity was discovered at Cambridge University, which means it was discovered in Europe, the most dominant superconducting technologies usually are present out of Europe. That should give you some, some possibility to have some insight why it is so. All right, so there is, apart from that, phenomena where we have a barrier and perturbative of interaction of left and right superconductor. 
So here we have a tunnel in Joseph's injection. We can have also a weak link, which is less perturbative of interactions between two superconductors. In such case, we have a constriction or narrowing of superconductivity. Anyway, it's it's good to know this this device in greater detail. All right, so let me move on. The Josephson junctions are described by so-called two fluid model, which works quite fine. Two fluid model assumes the coexistence of two fluids of electron fluids in, uh, in a sense in in a, in a superconductor. So one, so so electrons are paired, so they they form quasi boson, bosons that move without any dissipation. So this is so-called superconducting superfluid in a way. Some people call it like that. And the movement of quasi bosons doesn't generate any dissipation. Still, they, so on IV characteristic, you have a flow of electric current without voltage drop. That's quite amazing feature. That contradicts on law, right? Which is on law is dissipative law. And also the second component of fluid is there are electrons that are non-paired, and those non-paired electrons are subjective to dissipative processes. And normal ohm law applies to them. So this is expressed in a certain equivalent circuit that, that's given here. So you have superconductor one insulating but barrier and superconductor two. 2,000 angstroms of, of, of first material, let's say 10,000 angstroms and 2,000 angstroms. In such a way, you can you, you can create such sandwich. And the Josephson effect usually is represented by cross, and there is capacitance given here. So this capacitance, uh, and also there is also some resistance. So, so in any case, the, you have the upper and lower, uh, the superconductor described by this wave function that has its magnitude and phase. And what really matters is this phase difference between two wave functions. This, this does generate this electron current flow. I mean, most mostly the this flow of, let's say, um, of superfluid electrons. Essentially, due to the nature of Josephson junction, you basically have two types of current voltage characteristics. And this structure, which is specified here, it represents the tunneling Josephson junction. So in Josephson junction, what is very characteristic is the sinusoidal relation. And so you have phase difference, and then the sign of this phase difference uh, generates you the current. So this is some some constant time sign of phase difference between upper and and, and uh, lower. Uh, so you have uh, the phase assigned for upper and lower superconductor. So if you search for voltage dependence on on phase difference, it's given by uh, by such a relation. So change of phase with respect to time generates to voltage. And so and then you have also magnetic flux encoded in this constant as as given here. Yeah, so this is called the DC Josephson effect, DC, DC Josephson relation, and this is called AC Josephson effect. So actually what happens is by applying very small voltage, you can uh, generate time-dependent phase, and this time-dependent phase will generate your time-dependent electric current so this is voltage controlled current oscillator. Yeah, and also you can, so in such a way you can generate certain oscillations using voltage control. And so you have certain, this is this is expressed by, by this relation given here. Yeah, all right, so let me move on. So then I come to the concept of a squid. Squid is a system of one or so of superconducting loop in which one or two Josephson junctions occurs. 
Uh, here I will just uh, concentrate on, on, on a system uh, given here. So basically you have, um, yeah, you have this current flow and then you have superconductor interrupted by non-superconducting materials. So this will account for a tunneling Josephson junction. It is present here. And also you have a current flow and material is interrupted by non-superconducting by non-superconducting uh, uh, elements. So you have actually two Josephson junctions in parallel. They, they form a squid. And yeah, and then you have certain relations you, you can develop and that 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 magnetic field flux punching via interior of the superconductor generate, generates a certain uh, current. So actually, the system is... Um, so there are certain relations to be uh, derived. But however, I will not give you detailed uh, derivation right now. All right. Okay, so now let me, after bringing the most basic of basic concepts, I uh, basically, I'm going to give you a description on, on the ramp edge Josephson junction. So Josephson junction, we call it JJ. So then, so this is, this, there's certain, um, let's say, so certain concepts will be, of creating such nanostructures will be very much the same as from uh, semiconductor lithography. Yeah, so then, yeah, so I will give you maybe more details on, on, on the coming slide. Maybe so this, so this is typical, the process of, of creation yeah, I'm just trying to place it. All right, so what 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 phases we have? We have a deposition of buffer layer and the ground plane. The buffer layer ensures epitaxial growth of subsequent layers and the ground plane reduces the inductance of the strip lines. Next, we have this patterning of a ground plane and insulation layer deposition. So for example, a stack of the PBCO STO is used to separate the ground plane from the, the wiring layer. Now we have via etching. Vias are used are made to make electrical contact between the ground plane and the base electrode. Next stage we have in situ deposition of base electrodes and insulation layers. We have the def defining of ramp edge and ramp cleaning setup. Next step is 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 due to barrier and top electrode deposition. And then we have patterning of counter electrode. And then we have gold deposition. So uh, patterning contact pad and resistors by lift of processes. So we have such here, such, such notations as introduced base electrode barrier, counter electrode, isolation layer, ground plane, and STO buffer layer. There is Barone book about Josephson effect and also does description about some technological processes involved in the creation of Josephson junctions. Right, so let me continue. Yeah, maybe let's say next stage will be due to description, mathematical descriptions of Josephson junction and dynamics in the framework of two fluid model <clears throat> that, that despite being the despite the fact that it's oversimplified, it's it, it is quite much is quite much still powerful in modeling of integrating superconducting structures. Um so there is maybe I will give you some some facts and then I will refer to them uh, with, uh, with example of certain equations. In rapid signal quantum flux electronics, the operating speed is determined by the ICR product. IC is value of critical current. Josephson injection should have a non hysteretic single value IV characteristics to be used in a rapid single flux quantum circuits. 
The conduction requires a value of Stuart MacCamber parameter BC less than unity. And, uh, and basically BC is defined as 2P R square IC times C over flux quantum. And this is supposed to be smaller than one. For rapid single quantum flux electronics applications. Uh, so this is uh, IC and C are the critical currents and capacitance of Josephson junction respectively. And R is the junction resistance, including all in all and extrinsic shunts. Um, yeah, so this 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 Stuart MacCumber parameter will be uh, very much different between tunneling Josephson junctions and uh, weak links. So you need to maintain such technological processes in such a way that it is kept below one. Okay, um, and also you can, so what is characteristic is that, let's say, the, it's also important to understand that the electric field might exist in superconductors for a relatively short time because it does accel accelerate electrons. And if they if they go with its um, speed above certain speed, all superconductors is driven out of state. Nevertheless, if electric field is time dependent and doesn't last for too long, well, its acceleration uh, effect will not be so significant or will be moderate. And in such a case, superconductivity can last. All right. And there is also second regime of of, uh, of previously defined parameter, Stuart Mac Camber parameter, that is much above one and thus refer to so-called weak links. And then the circuit representation is much different. So you have maybe let's say, oh, I go back. This is this is for a weak links. Uh, so that's quite important to know. All right. So maybe I will make a small break and we will continue the lecture afterwards uh, as a second part of lecture. Let us start in the second part of the lecture. So we will continue our previous um, considerations. So now we uh, analyze the Josephson junction in a strong dampening strong damping case. So basically this is a resistor shunted capacitor Josephson junction RCSJ model with a case of elimination of capacitance. So this is when two superconductors have two so con connected are connected by constriction. So by narrowing of superconducting material, but with the case then where you, there is no uh, interruption in superconducting features, but only modulation of superconducting features. So in such case, the, in such case, we have a different different value of Mac, uh, this this McCart parameter, and uh, and then we have instead of a resistor uh, capacitor and Josephson junction, we have only resistance and capacitance. So then this relation is greatly simplified. And uh, this corresponds to the situation where we have, so here on the right side is the case of, of a weak link. So current voltage character, characteristic for a weak link. So we have that, we see that there is a, uh, uh, such nonlinearity as given here. 
And in second case, we have the we have a case of, of such nonlinearity. So this is tunneling Josephson junction, this is a weak. And uh, and then uh, these models, yeah, especially for a weak link, can be uh, solved in an analytical way. So this is equation 125 that gives a formula. So this is basically uh, first order differential equations that can be solved. All right. Uh, so so this is those those two curves are quite important as are the the prominent feature of Josephson effect. So Josephson effect always has such nonlinear uh, dependence of current on voltage. And this uh, this voltage is can that can be applied can be applied up to the magnitude of superconducting order parameter and above the whole the whole system transfers to normal state. So above certain voltage we have a uh, ohm law that is valid. Okay. So this is this is that's that's a foundation for description. So so just to remind you, this is uh, a Stewart Macaulay parameter that uh, gives a distinction between between uh, this weak link regime and tunneling Josephson junction regime. So here we have uh, resistance, capacitance, and value of critical current. That is a feature of, of, of Josephson junction. Um, there's also a important relation 1.3, which specifies uh, the situation where this, uh, this superconducting um, order parameter is proportional to critical current and resistance of, of Josephson junction. That's quite that's quite also important from in the framework of electrical engineering. All right, so let me move on. So, um, so if we if we talk about strong damping case, so of course we have this situation. Uh, so let me move back to the slide. With so, so there is a channel of superfluid flow of superfluid electrons and channel of of uh, um, of normal electrons flowing so there are two channels that are prominent in this model so that's why that's why we have such two contributions so and then uh, so equation uh, yeah so that's 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 how we can characterize this system i leave you as an exercise this uh, more exact considerations uh, possibly some homework can be assigned to those two um, uh, regimes of of, of of beta c all right so uh, so please remember this uh, figure 1.5 as very important in the framework of electrical engineering i have to underline that uh, theory of so left is uh, weak link and the right is um, tunneling Josephson junction in most quantum technologies this uh, right picture is more the weak uh, the tunneling Josephson junction is is somehow more more important for uh, quantum information processing and also uh, for the um, for the um, implementation of rapid single flux quantum electronics. Still weak link. Um, so the, the, the weak link is non-perturbative approach. And actually theory of weak links is also well developed, but still from the point of view of research due to the fact that tunneling regime of that, 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 that the tunneling Josephson junction is similar in calculations as this is a subversion of perturbation theory, so theory of of, of tunneling Josephson junctions is much well developed. So um, actually, the the left the weak links. Uh, so when we have a superconducting strip, and on the top, which we, when we place a strip, 
you can find, find in field uh, effect Josephson junctions that are also that were also subject of my of my previous research site. Okay, so that uh, let us move to the so this is so the Josephson junction was invented, and uh, it can be also described by uh, by of course gibbs burkando model by RCSJ model by Bogov Dijon's equations, which is which means by BCS. It can also be described by by um, USADEL formalism, Ellenberger, and also more sophisticated non-equilibrium green function techniques. I'm not going to touch those issues, but I just bring you this some insight into such possibilities. All right, so um, now we have a history of superconducting electronics. So in 60s, there was cryotron, cryotrons were created with use of PB material. This is, uh, that is uh, superconductor, BCS superconductor. In 70s, age, it was a latching, um, superconducting electronics, also based on PB, on PB and later in, in B, no, B, niobium. And then there was a famous idea of Likarev. My view is one candidate for a Nobel Prize in physics. Likarev was a Russian physicist who, Konstantin Likarev, you know, who uh, was who invented rapid single quantum flux electronics. And this electronics will be discussed in, in, in great detail uh, during our lecture. So this is the whole story is that, um, and we will, we will simply push the quantized flux of magnetic field. We will push it, and uh, and the act of pushing uh, in uh, superconducting structures is relatively low, has uh, not so high energetic cost, and if we represent flux as one bit of information, classical information, then uh, and then uh, simply saying uh, the rapid single flux electronics will encode a classical computer. Uh, in 2000, there was also the case of the perspective of usage of high temperature superconductors for rapid single flux quantum electronics, yet the technology of the technology is not fully, fully, well, fully well developed. I mean, it is developed to a certain extent, but it's not it's not so satisfactory from high integration point of view. And due to the fact that uh, high temperature superconductors are very complicated materials, so it's very hard to reproduce the same Josephson junctions, for example. And also those Josephson junctions in high temperature superconductors are, are much more noisy. And that's not the case of low temperature superconductors that are less noisy and also and also better controlled from uh, point of view te of technological process. Still, both options are on the table, but uh, as I would say for, since last three years, like, like AEST in Japan, they have more than 100,000 Josephson junctions on one superconducting chip and it does implement rapid single flux quantum electronics. All right, so let me move to this topic uh, so I can, I, I can specify certain important details. So uh, first, first thing is Crotion area H, and this H was relatively, uh, so uh, relatively, based on relatively simple concepts. So basically, you know, the the revolution in semiconductor industry was brought by um, the transistor, invention of transistor. And, uh, and then what, that's what then one should, should study NPN or PNP semiconductor system. And um, and uh, and in case of transistor, semiconductor transistor, that even the name 
suggests that it's transferable resistance, which means that you can control the resistance of, of NPN junction by certain voltage biases. And um, so you do this by, of course, by, by means of electric field. As I mentioned to you, what's already present from BCS fear of superconductivity, the you cannot really apply electric fields, big electric fields to the superconductor since you will destroy superconductivity quite quite quickly. Uh, but you need to use magnetic fields to tune properties of a superconductor, and that's this concept as described. So essentially what you do have here is you um, use, you have a, a kind of system, uh, just a junction that, that, that is uh, polarized by external um, current that generates magnetic field. So transport in one direction is, is tuned by another magnetic field coming from another cable. But it turns out that the system is not really effective from energetic point of view. And actually, IBM did fail um, in certain projects of that type. So IBM, for, for a relatively long time, was discouraged from usage, from investing in superconducting technologies. Actually, it gave a time for for Japanese people to invest in that area of technology. And actually, Japan is one of the dominant countries that develops the superconducting technologies till now. Now, of course, the new players are coming, like China. And also, there is a Fluxonic Society, represented by Professor Hannes Toepfer from Technical University of Ilmenau. And uh, Europe is also present in this in this. Uh, technology de development. All right, so uh, so this from the most simple concepts with polarization of a superconductor by external magnetic field to get a, a kind of Josephson junction with tunable parameters just failed because it does require a lot of energy. So so the concept uh, has to be changed. And actually, they were changed. And just during the last year of existence of Soviet Union, Likarev invented uh, this concept. He got even a big grant in Moscow, and then he, he never, um, he never um, managed to, to implement this grant in Moscow since the money did not, never fully arrived. So, so, so that's, that's how, how it was. So eventually it was continued, continued by other countries like the United States. And this are some pictures from the Stony Brook uh, that are brought here. Okay, and then, uh, so we have also the Creoton and Latching logic uh, given here. And uh, then you, we, we have a, yeah, we have a tunneling Creoton and traditional Kyotron. And then I want to concentrate on symbol flux quantum memory cell that was uh, specified over here. So we have a superconducting ring. There are two Josephson junctions interrupted by two Josephson junctions. And then there is inductance. So, so superconductor is ideal inductance and it does uh, inductively is able to interact with this loop. Yeah, I will, I, I will describe this concept in greater detail on, on coming slides. All right, so next thing is, next thing is flux. So uh, now I just move to the central concept of our lecture, which is rapid signal quantum flux electronics. So what's, what's that? What, what does it mean? What does it really mean? So imagine such a situation. So you have a superconducting ring. If by some mean you place a superconducting uh, 
green in external magnetic field source, then you immediately will induce, um, uh, you, you will encounter the situation where the magnetic field can give you this um, uh, magnetic field flux across this, um, across this, uh, this plane is integer multiplicity of elementary magnetic flux where n is integer number and uh, and then uh, this is due to quantization and i already mentioned this is to, due to the fact of of the, that wave function is a single value so after one rotation you need to come back to the same to the same value so then then does generate you the condition for vector potential and this does affect magnetic field uh, present in this loop <clears throat> then imagine you have a you have a superconducting loop interrupted locally by non superconducting material so you have a loop with one Joseph's injunction and then if you put if you connect this to external cables and you apply some relatively small voltage impulse you will locally locally weaken this superconductivity here. It was already weaker before, but you, you even more. And this magnetic field will come out of the loop. So actually it will be transported in that direction. And uh, so you can uh, you can eject magnetic field outside of the loop or you can bring it into. So that's just uh, that's that just um, the concept, and and you have this voltage pulse proportional to change of magnetic flux with time, and then you have this voltage times uh, dt dt integral is uh, has to fulfill this uh, is equal to value of flux, which means value of quantized magnetic field flux. All right, so this has, let's say, to bring you specific values, and this has values of in range of two millivolts times picosecond. All right, so let me move on. All right, so uh, so this this concept is is so single flux uh, quantum pulses is visible. Like that, these are characteristic um, voltage versus time characteristic of, of that shape. And there is a phase change with respect to time. Yeah, so this segment of work from 1991. And also you have uh, for different materials certain dependencies. And uh, well, so here you essentially you have Faraday law and and then you integrate it into that form. So so that's uh, we need to consider this case on specific exam at specific examples. So this is from circuit point theory point of view. Now we need to be a little bit trained in recognition of. Uh, how things are from circuit circuitry point of view. So, so essentially, as I mentioned to you, the driving driving factor is in the case of superconductors. You don't polarize by voltages; you are polarized by currents or by magnetic field. And then you have just have some junction. There is resistance, uh, and um, basically, I want to to underline that superconductor is ideal in inductor so that's how it is so you have just some junction transmission line like in this direction and the, across this line you can apply various dc biases and um, and then this flux can be pushed uh, pushed from, from one cell to, an, to neighboring cell and then uh, i would say the so there's multiple uh, multiplicity of certain magnetic 
flux unit, multi multiplicity of flux. So you can say this information is somehow topologically protected. And then you have also certain signal that you can deliver to the circuit. So everything can, can work in, in such manner. Okay, so this is just to JTL, transition transmission line, that's typical abbreviation. So I have inductance and transition junctions and biasing currents. So it's important to you, this is DC current bias. Current biasing, that's, that's really important. All right, so, um, so actually you have also in SPICE, uh, in the SPICE model, there is model for Josephson junction Rapid uh, various libraries are added. So it's already standard in electrical engineering. Yeah, so this is um, short pulse on gate A causes a two by switch in Josephson junction J2, which in turn, which in turn creates a pulse on output B. So there's a mechanism also for pulse generation. All right. So the pulse generations are, so, so this is very good candidate for DC electronics. And actually everything is already developed to create a superconducting supercomputer. So you can, as I mentioned, I already mentioned, you can transfer fluxon, otherwise you can say you can transfer a bit of information across the circuit. You can also storage, have a storage of that for a certain time. And then you can also get, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you, can, you can perform logical operations. So here we have the first brick is possible for active transfer of single flux quantum pulses is marked by small inductance. If we use a larger loop inductance between two junctions, the circulating current is too small to flip the second junction and the reformation is stored. This idea is used for building B stable cells. And, and third, to read uh, 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 an arbitrary information in such a loop, we need a decision element, namely two junction compo comparator, and we are going to describe it. I want to mention there is the whole library mm. All are available, also developed by Professor Hans Tepfer from the University of Illumenau. So there is some, some, some software simulating the circuits. Yeah, so that's... Uh... Yeah, this is already this, uh, this famous work by Eli Karev. Actually, he was a very famous physicist also from the point of view of single electron devices, but he, he's the father of this rapid single flux quantum electronics. And then I, I, I recommend those uh, references. Yeah, so we need to analyze how those two fluxons will interact. And there will be some level of similarity of their interaction with interaction of vortices in the superconductor. They are because of vortices, which I described in the first lecture. This is typical typical view of, of the circuitry. And this is DC versus single quantum flux interface. And maybe I, 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 I should give you deeper explanation of that. So here is DC, DC current is converted into single flux quantum. So certain value of the DC current can create, generate a, a fluxion that can be later used for information processing. So here we have, a, we polarize the circuit by some DC current sources. And that of course, non dissipative in case of superconductors. Then we have a Josephson junction, there are inductances. So here, and then the, here is a grounding. So basically the, the, that's, you have to, you, you have to solve the, the equations to see how this, this things works. So of course, 
if you solve the equations in the framework of of just as tangents, you will use this uh, this uh, RCSG model. Then everything has to be modeled uh, with reference to phase across Josephson junctions. So basically, you are dealing with coupled ordinary differential equations that can be solved relatively easy with various numerical techniques available today. Yeah, so this is there are typical parameters of DC SQF interface. Uh, so, the, the, so this is uh, this is the picture, and and the, then you have L one. So this is basically everything is in the range of Pico Henry's. That's about inductances. And the Josephson, the critical Josephson junction current, is uh, in the range of two hundred microamps, which means zero point two milliamp. So that's that that's a relatively high currents. But remember, remember that you can have high currents in superconductors without dissipation. That's a very prominent feature of, of that electronics. So basically, in when you have a, let's say semiconductor electronics, you can somehow deal with relatively big gradient of electric field. Especially if you have a field effect transistor, and for in case of short channel, it generates very high gradient electric field. In in so in case of superconductors, you have high current density and also quite big intensity of magnetic field. That's quite typical for this type of technology. So this is how things looks from design point of view, that's very much analogical environment to the case of semiconductors. Um, this is a view of a previous circuit from the top. So you put some layers and then you design the circuit. That's how it is. And this is how things also look like dimensions point of view. All right, so, uh, and then, then there is, let us move to some simulation examples. This will be, let's say, all right. So we have here, right, this uh, J1, J2, J3 currents. Okay, my number of phase shifts, sorry. So phase shifts across, so phase difference in those three systems with time. And uh, and then we have certain voltages across those three uh, Josephson junctions. As we uh, here and here we have input current, which is a rectangular wave. Well, those things one can write a script simulating those processes and get such loss. Uh, you can also convert single flux quantum to, to DC current. So there's single flux quantum, single flux is arriving, and then you want to have value information, whether it's present or not, present in certain DC current. So here is the circuit, so this is biasing DC current. Here you have inductances, of course. And so there is biasing currents here, here, and um, and then you get the value of DC current is, is given here. Well, you, you have to simply just to write down those equations and solve it. You can also use uh, spice solver for that. So you can go for both ways. So that's already kind of technological standard present. All right, and then, uh, then we have a splitter. And uh, so the splitter doubles single flux uh, quantum pulses. And there is an input uh, single flux quantum pulse. The splitter produ production produces 
two output pulses at two different output ports. The splitter is non-storing cell like Josephson transmission line, and therefore it is po also possible to create the cell without using an optimal optimization tool. So this is the way how to bring, in a sense, magnify the, the convert one single flux one pulses to two pulses. So that's how it is, and uh, and then so you have here single flux quantum pulse. So you have inductance resistance junction line inductances. There is DC biasing current present here, and then and then at the output you get two two fluxes here and here. All right. Still. You need to solve those to formulate this problem by coupled nonlinear differential ordinary differential equations for the RTAG model, and you will get it. This model is working pretty well still. There are some other corrections can be made, especially Bogle Vision's equations, and that's one of the projects for me to follow in quite nearest future. All right, so this is the interface between uh, DC current and single flux quantum. So DC current generating single flux quantum, then we have Josephson transmission line and single flux quantum, and again converted to DC current. That's the view of the structure. So you see that definitely it's not nanotechnology. It's, this is about mesoscopic physics. So it's absolutely not deep nanotechnology. So this is relatively cheap. This is relatively cheap from a technological perspective, especially those days. It was much, much less cheap 10, 20 years ago, but now it is, it is relatively cheap. All right, so um, then there is a C0 in a rapid single flux quantum. Now I give a prescription how to, how to create a logical inverter so this is the scheme of inverter and this is how it is from circuit point of view so we have just a transmission line so it's that then you have again if you just a transmission line you provide some clock so it could be of your signal and then you have uh, Josephson junction and inductance at Josephson junction, Josephson and Josephson transmission line. So you have to do Josephson transmission lines. Here is output. So, so lack of fluxon will be converted to fluxon, and the fluxon will be converted to nothing. So let us. We go into details. In the initial state zero, the higher current is flowing through J2, while J3 carries no current. This is the way in the absence of input pulse. If you want, the next clock pulse would trigger the single flux pulse in the J1 rather than J, J3. And this would appear at the circuit output J1. So there is certain reference to this work, a uh, Kidayerova work from 1991. That's pretty old already, almost 30 years old. I would say more than 30 years old, yeah. Um, now this kind of mnemotechnical description of how to implement OR gate, logical OR in rapid single flux quantum devices. So we have just some transmission lines here. So this is input clock and input two. So you do this as clocks in analogy to integrated CMOS electronics. You have certain biasing currents, resistance junctions, inductances, again inductances, and then 
Well, this is the result of certain analysis, recent transmission lines of the output. And so, you, so of course, two arguments gives you one. Uh, so OR has two arguments, or two argu uh, operations with two arguments and one output um, from that operation. Again, everything output is given in terms of um, number of flags presence of or lack of presence of flags that's how it is and here of course there are certain parameters of, of the circuit you see these values of the currents are not that small actually and um, there are quite big currents and but the system doesn't heat up and there are some inductances in range of pico henrys as as present here and there is this uh, work which does or the car is co-author of course and there is his team of quite famous physicists from, from Russia. So you have the true e transactions that apply supercon activity and that's already pretty old work. Then there's the Tef flip flop in rapid single flux quantum again I will probably there's no not enough time to go into all deep details. Well, again, uh, the the references are given here, and are pretty pretty much the same guys has invented the whole electronics. I, I need to underline that this approach is absolutely not fully so this is the here is a prescription for t flip flop and this uh, this prescription is absolutely not fully uh, standardized knowledge in a sense of that, that knowledge on superconducting electronics is quite is quite um not not fully well propagated across the europe and most electrical departments in Europe and the worldwide doesn't teach on superconducting electronics, mostly focusing on semiconductor electronics. So if you have this possibility, it's very good uh, additional expertise on, 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 on topics that are not, not commonly known. Right, so... Um, so here, how this is how it's seen from electron microscope. The system seen from the top. There is with the structure. So basically, we always can have a. So the so the the, the left structure corresponds to the structure of the right. There is capacitance in parallel with transition junction, and there is inductance and resistance. We can all we can describe this structure fully by RTSG model. All right, then an overview from, from microscopes, how things look like in highly integrated electronics. I will not go into deep details, just, just mention to you. Um, all right, so actually, we are going to talk about advantages of this electron. So we need to view topics in a critical way. What does it mean critical way? Well, effectively we have a cooling cost. Imagine you have a bigger ball and everything that is inside the ball going to cool down. If it's already cooled down, the cost of cooling is proportional to the surface of the ball. So as they say, proportional to R square, where R is the radius of the ball. And you can put, you can develop this technology in 3D. In 3D. So the costs are, so the amount of chips you can place in is proportional to R3. So this simply means that if you put sufficiently many microprocessors, superconducting microprocessors 
inside this ball at some point due to the low power consumption it will be beneficial so basically you can create you can create effective super, superconducting supercomputer classical supercomputer even dealing with high cooling costs uh, high, high uh, the liquid human costs um of course liquid humans in for in a closed cycle well data centers need to process information all the time that's how it is and also i would say that most quite many actually classical supercomputers they use um they have very, very big power consumption that goes into megawatts and and even beyond that. So this simply means that this tremendous cost in electricity usage. Also, I need if you have many processors, semiconductor processors, you need to cool them. Not only and apply energy for logical operations, you need to cool them. And here, actually, the real costs in case of superconducting technologies is, is due to the fact that you don't need to cool it so much so you simply mm -hmm. uh, well you cool it only to, to liquid helium but at the same time almost almost no running costs from grid power consumption because it's so little uh, the main obstacle behind full implementation of rapid single flux quantum is due to its lack of memory and this can be this can be tuned so there's uh, uh, lack of everything is in place microprocessors works with a similar speed as semiconductor processors so even much less energy costly but the lacking part is the lack of random access memory and there's so the existing random access memory for rapid single flux quantum are not fully reliable. That's how it is. If they are not reliable, they cannot be fully implemented on a full scale. But if somebody would invent a random access memory for rapid single flux quantum that is so reliable, one could get the whole market, maybe not the whole, but quite a big piece of market in the that deals with computation. And that's really worth the business. Um, right. Actually, I'm, I'm one of the person that was modeling new schemes for random access memory for rapid single flux quantum. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, open for. Uh, I'm open for. Um, detailed consultations on that topic. Well, of course, always there are limitations of of downscaling devices. That's also quite important. That, but still, due to power, low power consumption, that's a quite attractive feature from concept of sustainable growth. That that uh, it's not wasting too much energy, and getting energy is, of course, always about destruction of some environment that's how it is all right so let me move on okay now a little bit story about what we can do so we can have a information processing unit classical information processing unit what is superconducting here of course if you have semiconductor electronics in this semiconductor electronics well for semiconductor electronics is, is best to use semiconductor detectors sensors at, uh, but in case of but it would be very hard to get convert the information from semiconductor sensor to superconductor so it has it is better to have both semicon superconducting sensors and superconducting information processing unit. I already described your superconducting processing unit 
using example of rapid single flux quantum electronics. Now let me talk a little bit about superconducting bolometer. So that's the, the, the bolometer uh, is given here, the semiconductor bolometer. So it detects uh, photons. And it's quite, quite noisy. And you can also use superconducting single photon detectors as much less noise. Mm. Actually, there is a lot of work on on that field. Mm. Professor Marek Guziewicz from Institute of Molecular Electronics and Photonics in Warsaw uh, gives some, I have some achievements in construction of superconducting single photon detectors. And now there's a comparison materials. So this is the same device, the same task is, is detection of photon counting. And then we have silicon, indium, gallium, arsenide, superconducting single photon detector, SSPD. And then uh, we have operating temperature. So silicon works at 300 Kelvin, in Jung Gar Garim Alcenite 200 Kelvin, and this guy, superconducting single photon detector from 2 to 4.2 uh, Kelvin. And there is a wavelength of uh, in micrometers that can be counted. Well, I would say this has even broader range than the case of silicon. Then there's time resolution. So the superconductor has excellent time resolution. So photon hits the superconducting structure, locally it warms up, there is voltage presence on IV characteristic, voltage peak, then due to cooling power, this heated superconductor is, is coming back to superconducting state. This happens in, in, time, in this time range of 18 picoseconds, so it's very quick. And those guys, or 20 times worse. So I would say inertia is somehow... Okay, so this is for superconducting single photon detector. Also, you can think about superconducting single neutron detector. So you, on the top of superconductor, you put certain material, there's neutron coming from nuclear reactor or from solar wind, it hits. This material is local nuclear reaction coming, which generates some heat, and then it's, uh, it, it touches the, the superconductor. And there is dark count rate, so very low amount, low number of noise and errors in case of superconductor. Maximum count rate is very high, 150 megahertz, and photon number resolution is and is very limited. In case of semiconductor, so definitely you have said a superiority of superconducting single photon detectors. All right, let me move on. Now, just some kind of general picture about superconducting processors. This is by Fujimaki and from Nagoya University. It's eight bit serial microprocessor using just some junctions. The concept of rapid single flux quantum electronics. So extremely low power consumption, much below one joule. Um, and those prototypes has been developed. This guy was the first one to construct it. And now let's move on to some technology present in Institute of Photonics in Vienna. Say, do, 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 do you have really rapid single fast quantum technology well developed? Yeah, then just uh, you have CDC SFQ interface as already described, Jefferson transmissions line. Yeah, again, SFQ DC translation. Because already have developed process for that. And um, they have this, so the hardware is already developed and present in Europe. That's how it's. All right, then there is um, 
the Fluxonics, so there are views of this Fluxonics Foundry cell library available developed by Professor Hannes Teffer. And then you have also view of the structures, just transmission line on the top, line crossing. So this is mainly, mainly done in two planar technology, two dimension planar technology, but you can also do it in three dimensions. And then you have various like splitter, merger of two. This is uh, DC single flux quantum resistance transmission line single flux DC. So so, the, so, so the, this does require certain certain attention in a greater study. All right. Now there is another concept, and I will I'm touching this concept. So before, so far, I described you just as a transmission line and rapid single flux quantum electronics, which bases a single flux quantum pulses. So there is a kind of T flip flop made in the framework of already presented technology. You have Josephson junctions and, and, and inductances and so on. This is, and then what do you have? You can interact. So those guys carry single fluxes of magnetic fields. So you have a, and then you, and now there's a com complex of, uh, concept of flux qubit Josephson junction. That that is the main concept of of of, of permutation of qubit as by for example by D wave company. So you have a superconductor loop, gray, and then there's one big loop, and there's another loop superconductor, and there are two Josephson junctions. So this guy is able to store you. The qubit. And actually, you interact with this guy by external solenoid, as, as given here. So, read out circuit. And also, you can. So, what I'm saying is that you can set state of flux qubit by rapid single flux quantum electrons. So, this very, very, very important feature that, well, that you need to, how to say, you have interface, this hardware interface between classical superconducting computer represented by rapid uh, single flux quantum electronics and quantum computer represented by flux qubits, qubits array and so on. So you, you, there's a way to communicate information between those two chips. Incrogate the environment, of course. Of course, there are certain heating, but those concepts exist, and certain experiments has been already done with that. Right. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, now another thing. So there were some. DARPA projects about big supercomputer based on rapid single flux quantum circuits. So you have cryogenic refrigerator, which keeps for Kelvin constant temperature. So technology of rapid single flux quantum with niobium niob nitrate can be there. Then you have CPU K input. So you you, you that, that's that's this project superconducting computing system there. There was even a project of placement of the system at the moon, because then this you will have much higher, much lesser coin costs. This was proposed you called war time between US and Soviet Union. It was cancelled after the, the, the collapse of Soviet Union has happened, but this this feature, the technology develop during technology develop during a kind of cold war is is quite informative. That there was a competition between generation of new elements between Soviet Union and 
US because of Cold War. So sometimes this competition, even though that this was a political competition, can bring some benefit for science and technology. And that's the case of, of, of that project. Unfortunately, till now, due to lack of Cold War, this will not happen. Maybe the possible Cold War between China and the US in area of technologies will result in similar type of projects to be reactivated and somehow upgraded. So already Japanese has 100,000 Jesus injunctions on one chip uh, rapid, in a rapid single flux quantum scheme. So that's that's just good appetizer to go for that things more deeply. Right. And of course, Fluxoing Society, which is already not fully well funded yet, can reborn can, and can contribute to this development of superconducting technologies. This is, we will have ultra sensitive sensing and imaging, imaging, quantum measurement, instrumentation, advanced analog digital color converters, superconductive electronics technology. So, Maybe some piece of example how things are developed in Poland. The tunnel Josephson junctions made by double angle evaporation. And there are pictures this is from Maciej, already Professor Maciej Zgierski from Institute of Physics, Polish Academy of Science. There are those views coming from his lab. Again, there's a squid. Well, we can try to design the technological process making those devices. This is quick using diamond bridges uh, as so kind of weak links, you can say, not tunneling junctions. Right, and then this looks like it's foundry in Ilmano. This looks like it's foundry is a library ma made by Professor Hannes Telpfer and his co workers already available and validated based on, on hardware experiments. That's how it is. Again, the view you can go to the web page and see details. Rapid single flux quantum cell library, have circuits, interfaces, cells, basics. As you see, there are some contact details. And there are some libraries, some references. So, of course, the most important is Likarev and Seminov work, 1991. It's the time of innovation, invention of this electronics. There are some um, Likarev, after the collapse of Soviet Union, moved to this university in the US. So, there are some references about the achievements of his. Uh, Describe on this web page. Then there is a concept for rapid single flux quantum logic in high temperature superconductors like speech thesis. Then here there is uh, there are various works enhancing funding in European roadmap on superconductor electronic status and perspectives. Then there is uh, again a reference to even now to Professor Hannes Teufer to these libraries. And there's a possibility, there's also some my work on Jesus and Junctions. Like field into just some junctions that can be also um, helpful in understanding the process, the, the, the details of physics of just some junctions. Um, mostly, I, I, Konstantin Likarev, I work, I do recommend for going deep into that field. Uh, you have like super conditional electronics described here. Again, Likarev. Talking about the review paper of the rapid single flux quantum technology, physics, and devices. And that's it for for today, I guess. I was quite uh, informative. Result of material I will take um kdvpomorski at gmail.com is my email. So please, if you have questions, please email me. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for your attention.